How's it hanging, family? Hope you're in the middle of a great one. This is Irvington Unbound, the newsletter of the Sheridan Street Block Association. I'm Jay. Let's get to work. In block news, we were unable to acquire speed bumps this season. We also have yet to know if the water report's been published. Those inquiries were taken to the council meeting, but others got long-winded, and, you know, time is the one thing you don't get back, so we'll be looking back into that later. The most burning question that we've gotten this week has been how ready is Irvington for the upcoming winter. With the street paving being shut down around November, they purchased um, equipment at the end of last winter, and it's gassed up and ready to go with a huge salt supply. Hopefully we have a decent winter, but it seems as if the township is prepared if things get rough. The Civilian Complaint Review Board progressed this week when Ms. O, a town legal rep, reached back and we're supposed to hear from the IPD by September 30th, so we're definitely staying on top of that. Next week, we're going to reach back out to Director Harley regarding the sewage system. In recent dialogue, he stated that it was such a priority, he was getting it surveyed by someone and he'd have more information in a couple of weeks. So, you know, we're going to reach out to him on that. But we also want to congratulate him on getting the PTSD medical marijuana for vets exemption signed by Christy, who's unaware he, for those unaware, (laughs) he pulls double duty as an assemblyman. And where the drug war as a whole is legitimately nonsensical, it's also good to acknowledge strides in those who make them. The Gatlin Center has a whole new parking lot and a much more secure gate, and it looks very, very legit. As well as sidewalk, uh, as well as Chancellor Avenue sidewalks are getting nice and smooth, and they're looking to add meters, which is one of the smarter moves to increase town revenue. So with so much going on, it's really easy to see how the speed bumps can be overlooked. The director's meeting kept with the same themes that each one has had since we started going to them. Um, the trash, the vacant and rundown properties, and the same old, this didn't happen overnight mantra. And a vow to address such properties, such not properties, such issues. Uh, the mayor was noticeably absent. Seems as if he was in D.C. on business with, Don- with Congressman Donald Payne. It's a good look, but Miss McDaniel didn't have her sparring partner, and business administrator Musa Malik threw ice water on her fire early. (laughs) Really wish we could just watch this stuff on TV, but Irvington just doesn't work like that. The communication of the road work and street closures were also addressed, and Mr. Malik uh, stated that he'd ensure that the detour signs would be more visible and in their proper place. In state news, Phil Murphy has dropped some very interesting policy proposals and gained a few endorsements while most are waiting for the presidential election to subside. It will become very interesting when uh, when establishment legislators get more involved. As mentioned, Governor Christie signed the bill allowing vets suffering from PTSD to gain medical marijuana. Yay! He also called schools in urban districts failure factories after forcing many of the schools into the positions that they are currently in. We can do an entire video on the mess that's become of our educational system. The push to get north casinos into northern New Jersey seems to be at a halt. The expansion of gambling in neighboring states and zero foresight are why Atlantic City is having such a hard time recovering. We've opened up sports betting while privatizing the state lottery. The money's gotten so convoluted that such a risk as putting a casino in Newark or Jersey City is well worth deeper consideration. In national news, the presidential race is far closer than it has any right to be. But that's what happens when you have two of the least likable people running. Private companies are turning dogs on protesters. An explosive went off in a garbage can at Seaside Park's Semper 5 race. Jay-Z released the End the Drug War video. A teacher in Atlanta wore a dress that no one would want their 10-year-old daughter to want to wear. <laughs> ITT Tech, the for-profit college, had to shut down due to increased oversight, and our government gave $3 billion to Israel while saying we can't afford to fix the problems here. Lastly, there was a sit-down with Director of the... <laughs> okay. There was a sit-down with the Director of Department of Economic Development and Grant Oversight, Janae Phillip. Her, the former DEPCO... <laughs> Oh my goodness, like at the end of this. (laughs) The newly formed DEPCO was initiated in March with four main functions. Redevelopment, um, which is foreclosing on decrepit properties. Business services and workforce development, which go hand in hand with giving the businesses more incentive to stay and expand while while connecting them with the residents best qualified to meet their needs. 
and grant oversight, ensuring funding is spending uh, is being spent pro- appropriately. In our almost hour-long discussion, Ms. Phillips explained a, pr- a program currently in the works called First Source Economic Benefit Linkage. Hopefully, they do something with that name before launching, tentatively at the end of this year or the beginning of next. What it does is create a database website containing business uh, the, containing incoming businesses hiring needs and residents' resumes to match Irvingtonians with local jobs at wages that meet industry standards. As far as what industries and businesses will be setting up shop in Irvington, she showed me the new detailed application to develop here in town with far more stringent standards that had been previously set, including an essay-like intent portion to ensure that the de- that the developer has more than money in mind when looking to get involved with our town. Since its genesis, there have been 75 inquiries, 16 made it past um, intent, and only seven have been able to process the application. It's a much tougher threshold. Foreclosing on the dilapidated housing and getting abandoned properties back on the books, upgrading the infrastructure and employing locally to increase income levels are all moves that over time can increase property value and decrease property taxes if managed correctly. And what lies at the heart of our communi- community's problems is our culture, a fact that Ms. Phillip acknowledged. As a lawyer and with a history of social work in the field, Ms. Phillip has dealt with some of our more unreasonable counterparts firsthand and recognizes that though many wounds are self-inflicted, the environment we collectively created plays a large part in the people we produce and seems to be ready to use her position to strengthen our community. So, as usual, we hope you and your family are happy, healthy, and prosperous. Take a moment to comment, like, and subscribe for new weekly videos. Follow our Instagram, one word, UnitedNJ, and Twitter at UnifiedNJ. Like, you know, at. So until next time, take care of yourself and your family. Nothing but love.